It's on live. All right. Shabbat Shalom. The brothers of GMS New Orleans with another live Shabbat lesson. But before we get started, as always, we're going to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule and teach well. And peace and salutations to you, sincere Akim, out there, pushing this word and truth and sincerity to the four corners of the globe. May you, brothers, endure until the end. And to the few sincere uh, sisters out there that are, are learning in a uh, in, in silence and in diligence. But uh, this Shabbat lesson is, is pretty much going to be a continuation of yesterday's Shabbat lesson since we kind of spent most of that lesson going into the, the origins of Christmas and some of the pagan symbolism behind it. And we were trying to go into how, how so-called Jesus Christ, who, whose true name is Yahweh his birthday was not on December 25th. And uh, that's just what we're going to be going into with this Shabbat lesson. And when you are, in, in, when you have an understanding of the scriptures and just the the time periods and, and and what was taking place during the times of Yahushua's birth, it wouldn't make sense for him to be born in the in the dead of winter on on in December of the ancient times, because contrary to popular belief, the Middle East does have harsh cold periods. The winters are harsh. And, and at night times, even during during spring and and uh, fall and, and and summer, people can risk dying out in the desert due to exposure to cold weather. But uh, we'll just get into the scriptures. If somebody could get me Luke chapter two, we'll start at verse one. I got you. I'm here. Okay. The book of Luke chapter two and verse one. It says, "And it came to pass in those days that there went out." a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. You can read the verse 3, Baba Kasha. It says, and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius okay. was governor of Syria and went to like, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And of course we know that the United States of America is the the reincarnation of the Roman Empire. And just like ancient Rome had a tax season, the U.S. has a tax season. And when does the U.S. have its tax season? Usually starting around April, going into, going into let's say, July. So going into the spring, into the summer. Nah, nah it starts from January to January, April. January to April? Yeah, tax season for the U.S. is usually... The first quarter of the year. Oh, kind. Of. It's usually yeah. January to April. April 15th. Huh? April, April 15th. 15th, yeah. Kind, kind. Well, yeah. Not around. Oh, well, yeah. So the, the U.S. tax season is from January to April. And then I believe, don't you have some extensions too? Like people that, that file late? There's April. Good mean. Well, it's like uh, April for the federal and May for the state. You know, so much been around the time. Kind, kind. Yeah, so it's stand to be believed that, that the tax season in ancient Rome was around the same time, too. You know, January going into April. So ending, ending what, around the springtime. Keep going on. God, verse 4, it says, And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Ju Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. Keep going on. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. You can read verse, verse eight. It says, and there, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in a field 
keep and watch over the flock by night. Uh, so with Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 8, there's uh, several things taking place. For one, you've got the Romans collecting taxes during their tax season. And as I said in verse 3, and all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And we know during this time that uh, Israel, uh, Judea, with the southern kingdom, was a, was a, a province of Rome at that time. So they, they were subject to the taxes just to, as all the other nations and peoples that were under the subjection of the Roman empire. So you had, you had uh, Joseph and Mary and Mary was of course pregnant with Yahweh go up for a, uh, you know, to pay their taxes and whatnot. But then when you keep going on, it says that, uh, Verse six, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And uh, you had a lot of people there. People, as I said, people gathering in their particular places to uh, pay their taxes, but at the same time, it wouldn't be just such an influx of people flooding into one area to where the ends would be full. And if I could add this, uh, in uh, Deuteronomy, real quick, and I'll give it right back to you, in Deuteronomy with that 16 and 16 is uh, uh, the males come up, you know, three times a year. So what was happening right here it was a gathering in which, you know, all the reason why the ends and all the, the what you would call ends or they at Davenel hotels or what we would know today. The reason why they was full because what it was the be uh, once again, it was the what the beginning of the year, all right. With things what spring up, things mm -hmm. come out, which we're gonna prove that you know, so we can know actually when Yahweh Shah was actually born, man. All right, and it wasn't in the winter time, winter time represents the end of the year, which where we at now. Okay, so seasons are important. That's why uh, here's a call. You know, they, they was given that, that talent or whatnot, the spirit to what? Discern the seasons, all right? Because seasons mark uh, certain times when things happen in his, historical points and marks, man, all right? But nonetheless, three times a year, the, the males uh, meet up from, coming from the different areas, man. But go ahead, whatever you brothers got that, just to show that it was the beginning of the year. Go ahead. I got it. Okay, Nobody okay. got it. Yeah, grab it. Yeah, this, Get to the this, point uh, for real quick. That is Deuteronomy 16, verse 16. Three times a year shall all thy males appear before Yahweh thy power in the place which he shall choose, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles, and they shall not appear before Yahweh empty. Come. So again, go ahead. You got it. You got it, Ronnie. So at the time of this tax season that was taking place where it said uh, Joseph and Mary went up to Bethlehem and Mary was pregnant with Yahweh It was actually during the Passover, one of yeah. the three times that the male young males were appointed to uh, come before the father. So not only was Joseph and Mary going up to, you know, have pay their taxes and have them gathered at Bethlehem so they could be sent off to Rome. At the same time, you had the Passover taking place. So you had Israelites from all over the Roman Empire and other places that they were scattered to going up to Bethlehem as well. So that's why all the inns were full and they yeah. had to go out and stay in a, a barn area with the ang with animals and Yahweh was in that manger. And as it says in verse 8, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And like we said at the beginning of the video, contrary to popular belief, the Middle East has harsh winters and, and pretty intense cold periods as well. So if, if you had uh, shepherds with their flocks out during December in the Middle East with, with those harsh winters, that wouldn't make any sense because they would die and, the, and especially their flocks would die. So if they had their flocks out at night, it would stand to reason that they would bring them out in a more a more warmer period. While it still may have been chilly, they would have their flocks out 
at a time that wasn't so so harsh and and, the, and that would make sense for it to you know what be going into into the spring into the the beginning of the year which is not in december or it was just not in january as it is in, in western nations it's going into like your your march march is the beginning of the year for a lot of these other nations across the planet because they're still more in the that eastern mindset that life or a new year comes in in the spring when life starts to come in, not in the dead of winter when everything's at its end and is, is dying off. I got your precept, bro. Kind. To prove what you're saying. This Songs of Solomon 2 and 11, it says, for lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of the singing of the bird is come. And the voice of the turtle is heard in our land. The fig tree put it forth her green figs, and the vines with the tender grape give a good smell. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. And King Solomon was, of course, what, king of Israel. And where did he preside at? In Jerusalem. And Jerusalem is Jerusalem and Israel is considered in what the so-called Middle East. And you would think. That, uh, oh, since it's in a, a desert, they don't have snows or winters or anything like that. But clearly, King Solomon said, for lo, the winter is past, the rain yes. is over, is gone. So it's they gone. show that they had winters, cold weather there, rain, sleet, snow, everything. And I remember a couple of years ago, I saw footage. It was, uh, I believe it was in actually in January of 2018, where some of those Hezbollah, it was Hezbollah. I think they shot missiles from Lebanon into Israel, and you had it, and you had uh, Israelis, those 1948ers, looking at the missiles going in the sky, and they were snowing. They were they were skiing. It looked like they were in uh, Switzerland or something, skiing on on some uh, snow slopes, showing that clearly that the Middle East and especially the land of Israel, when it's a winter winter time, they get snow, and it gets really cold there. So again. Back in that Luke chapter two, verse eight, the shepherds wouldn't be out at night in, in the dead of winter, in the dead of snow, uh, uh, grazing their flocks. That's why I say the flowers appear on the earth. Kind. When when things start to blossom and come out, Akim, what season of the year is it? Spring. Oh, spring. It's spring. Spring represents the what? The what of the year? Beginning. The beginning of the, the year. beginning. Right. <laughs> That's when the new year is. All right. And Yahweh Shai, if the Lord was to bring about uh his first begotten or whatever it would be, you think you would bring him in a dead season when there's no leaves on the trees, it's cold, it's dark, it's gloomy. No, because he marks the beginning of life. Yahweh Shai is life when you go into Adam, these different things. So what? What would spring out of him? It would be more like as a time when he would be born would be around when? A time when they, everything has life to it. In the winter, you see naked trees. Everything is hot. Animals actually hide in the winter. You want to say something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had the etymology for this word spring. You got it. It's a old English springing to leap, to burst forth, to spread and grow. It says... The season in which plants begin to rise, an act or time of springing or appearing, the first appearance, the beginning, birth. That's birth. Nice. Beautiful. That's the birth of Yahweh, which we're going to get into. And furthermore, prove that the end of the year, okay, doesn't mark the birth of Yahweh, man. It's the beginning of the year, man. Okay? The beginning of the year, which we, the custom in which us Hebrew Israelites uphold, okay, and the, well, the world don't, you know, actually celebrate it or as a high, but it actually is actually a high holy day, man. All right, go ahead, uh, you got it, bro. Kind. So I hey, quick brief for you. Kind, you got it. Kind. It's out of the book of Saint Matthew, chapter twenty-four, verse twenty. It says, "But pray ye that your flight be not in." The winter, neither on the Sabbath day, and this in red letters, Yahweh Shai speaking. And before we got off the topic of, um, you know, winter, I just wanted to hey, put that out there. Why would Yahweh Shai mention, I right, 
pray that your your flight be not in the winter because the winter makes everything more hard. Okay, it's 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 hard to move. You know your blood circulation, all kind of you know, it's just harder to to live. All right, in the winter. And you but, gotta um, th- and you go gotta it's lucky. You got it, brother. It's a lot. And you gotta think too, like. Nobody in their right mind would let a, a pregnant woman, if it was if it was the dead of winter, go out and stay in a manger with animals. Because the, the woman would die, the baby would die. It, it it just wouldn't make any sense at all. Nor nor would any 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 husband allow their their wife and child, unborn child, to do that as well. So clearly, right. clearly there's discrepancies there. Saying yeah, I wish I was born on December twenty fifth. What'd you say? Ot? You pre- you basically outside when you Kinda. go in the manger. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, you have animals can survive out in the winter because of what? They fur coats. They they animals are designed to survive out in the winter like that, but not not people. And they be hot. They hibernate. Mm-hmm. Certain Kinda. animals. Most animals. Most animals hide in the in the winter. Kinda. Like a great. You know, percentage. I know you probably know more, Kalai, about it, but I'm sure they 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 hide themselves or put themselves up. Go ahead, you got it, bro. Well, I'm just gonna say, hey, nothing grows. No, it's no food out. You know, so it's it's they gotta go hide, bro. There's nothing for them to do. It's just it's death outside, right? But you got it. Bro. So again, in that Luke chapter two, verse eight, if it was the winter. And, and nothing's growing outside, why you would keep your flocks inside until what? So things started warming up so you know you could bring them out and bring them out so they could walk over and, and graze the lands, but not during winter. But uh let me see. Whoever's still in Luke chapter two, yeah. you can jump to verse 39 and read down to verse 42. And you can probably find that Amawad, that information we're dealing with where this whole idea of uh, Yahweh Shot being born on December 25th came from. Okay. I'm on it. Okay. You got okay. it? Yeah, I got the, uh, the loop for you. Okay, okay. It's back in the book of Luke, chapter 2, and verse 39, it says, And when they had performed all things according to the law of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh they returned to Galilee, to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of Yahweh was upon him. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of like at the feast of the Passover. And when he was twelve years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. So this is fast forward forwarding to when Yahweh Shai was, was, was 12 years old. And as it says, now his parents went up to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And back in uh, earlier up in, in Luke chapter two, it said that they went up to where? Be- uh, Bethlehem, Bethlehem, Bethlehem in, in Judea for, for, for one on one hand to pay uh, pay the taxes. And then on the other hand, because it was the Passover as well, as the brother Kaya brought out earlier in the law, uh, Israelite males are supposed to go before the Lord three times in their life. Once during the Feast of Unleavened Bread and uh, the, the Feast of Tabernacles and the, the Feast of Weeks. Feast of Weeks. And again, at the manger, the, the, the hotel or the inn that they were trying to go to during that time was full, not just because a bunch of people were going to pay taxes and all just happened to be in Bethlehem, but because at the same time, it was uh, the Passover as well. So you had, again, Israelites from everywhere flooding into that area, filling up into the inn so they could go uh, celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Passover. i even throw this in now real quick. When have you ever saw from Job to... Abraham to Isaac, Jacob, and any accounts in the scripture celebrate their birthday. Uh-huh. That's not in there. 
Now you do have accounts where the heathen celebrated their birthday. All right, because first and foremost is a heathenistic custom. Okay, to mark the day that you was born. Job actually said, let that day perish the where in the day he was born. But that's just another, you know, we never celebra celebrated birthday. That's a heathenistic custom. Go ahead, right? And when you notice, when it does mention a uh, heathen celebrating their birthdays in the scriptures, a, a negative event always happened, came with it. That's right. Had Herod celebrating his birthday. And what happened? Yeah. The His wife's daughter who danced for him. A giant. Yeah. Herod said, because she danced so well, I'd give you anything you want up to half of my kingdom. And her mother manipulated her into saying, ask for the head of John the Baptist. So... That happened during Herod's birthday, and then back in uh, Genesis, Pharaoh's birthday. Pharaoh, Pharaoh had his birthday, and I believe, I think you, you probably remember the account more than me. He had his his uh, cup bear, somebody put to death. Yeah, his head, brother. his head, his head, uh, uh, ba uh, uh Chief Bacon. Butler. Yeah, his head, Chief Butler. He had him put to death, man. Mm -hmm. So just okay. death, and negative that. connotations. <laughs> in the scriptures are, are related to heathens birthdays and again it's not a custom of the israelites to celebrate birthdays we have our high holy days and as simple as that and christmas like we went into it yesterday shabbat lesson isn't one of them it's a high hella day for these heathens that, that happened on all eight birthdays and the three little counts that you had a dead happened john he was cut off Pharaoh cut his servants his chief baker servants head off uh or killed them or whatever or lifted up the head so it, it's 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 not biblical man got from it. an israelite perspective you got it bro you got some idea okay come on. all right it's the uh, ecclesiastes 7 and 1 a good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of one's birth he hanged them yeah, kind of. So it's better to, uh, you know, to, uh, I guess, pretty much celebrate someone's death because, you know, you're free. You know, you got no more afflictions going on. You know, and, and especially in this day and age, you know that you who you are now. You know what tribe you're from. You know who your power is. But when you're born, you're born into all this hell, you know, into the world, into all the uh, foolishness going on. Like, you don't know who you are. You know, you lost your connection with your heritage, and you just got to go through all the, the trials and tribulations of this damn world, man. And just to back up what the brother Kaya said, hey, Job, Job cursed the day of his birth. And to back up what you were saying, Samakia, hey, it, in a sense, it's better to celebrate the day of one's death. Well, not celebrate it, but the day of one's death. Is better than celebrating your birthday because when you go to the spirit world, hey, that's an ease of all afflictions. You don't have to worry about the things you deal with physically or mentally, and you're at peace in the spirit world. And that's why Job was lamenting his the day of his birth, the day that he, he came out of his mother's womb. He said, it'd be better if I had passed away in my mother's womb. Because why? He was going through those heavy afflictions that the Most High allowed Satan to put on him to test his faith in the Most High. He hanged. He hanged the chief butler. Just to correct it, he he hanged the chief but his chief kind of, butler. He hung him. Kind of, kind of. So, hey, with the account of uh, Pharaoh's uh, baker in Genesis, he hung him, and that was uh, on his birthday. So <laughs> birthdays all around have a, a negative connotation on it. And with all that being said, say say Yahushai was born on December twenty fifth. You're not supposed to celebrate it. You're not. The, on the day he actually was born, you're not supposed to celebrate it. You're not supposed to be celebrating anybody's birthday or your birthday as well. Sure. But, as, but as we went into with the Shabbat lesson yesterday, Yahweh's birthday has nothing to do with Christmas. Christmas it goes back to ancient pagan sex worship and, and idolatry and, and freakism. But uh, you had that information, Amawad. And when you really do your research with the information the brother's about to bring out, you'll see that this whole idea of so-called Jesus being born on December 25th was all just a fabrication made up, the imagination 
of some bugged out Edomite's mind. Okay, I'm sharing the screen up. Yeah, it says, did you know dot org? It says history of Christmas in ancient oh, pagan times. Zoom in two times. There you go. Is better? Yeah. Okay. It says, in ancient pagan times, the last day of winter in the northern hemisphere was celebrated as the night that the great mother goddess gives birth to the baby sun god. It is also called Yule, the day a huge log is added to a bonfire around which everyone would dance and sing to awaken the sun from his long winter sleep. And we went into Yule, Yule log yesterday. It's another freak, uh, a freak festival celebrating the ride. Total madness. It says... And also, if I could say, too, you got these people out here that talk about, oh, Jesus Christ is just a a representation. He's the son of God, but they try to link it to it actually being the sun, you know, the sun going down and then rising up, which those people are right in a sense, because Jesus Christ is a is a is a is a false God in a fabrication going back to Serapis Chris Serapis Christus and then uh other characters like like uh, Nimrod, for for instance, but the true the true Messiah, whose true name is Yahawashai, he he isn't dealing with any of that symbolism, dealing with with sun worship or anything like that. Come on, that's why you have these bug outs talking about grand rising. Don't say good morning because morning is when somebody died. You know they they take the etym- well they ignore the etymology of words and just look at how how words sound in English. So they'll take S O N and S-U-N, and just put it together. It's a bunch of prison nonsense, but it says, in Roman times, it became the celebrations honoring Saturnus, or Saturnalia, the harvest god, and Mithras, the ancient god of light, a form of sun worship that had come to Rome from Syria a century before with the cult of Sol Invictus. It announced that winter is not forever, that life continues, and an invitation to stay in good spirit which a lot of a lot of philosophies go back to sun worship even heliocentricity the idea that we use a, a solar calendar it all goes back to worship of the sun it says the first day of winter and if i can say too oh you got it just the back of what you just that point you just made this whole uh idea the big big bang theory goes back to ancient babylon and shit we i think i may have some information on that too you know, just dealing with this whole idea of the sun worship, they say the Big Bang, the, the sun exploded or a Big Bang happened and everything came out of it. That all goes back to ancient Babylonian pagan worship and idolatry. Yeah, the idea that everything revolves around the sun, which is completely against the scriptures. The idea that the sun is the only thing that that uh, that gives light. They, they say the moon doesn't have actual light. It's just the sun bouncing off the moon that that's madness man all of the planets have have light emanating from them and we can prove through the scriptures that that, that we don't live in a, a heliocentric uh universe we live in a, a geocentric universe because the earth is the center of the universe and if somebody could get it for me real quick first esdras chapter 4 verse 34 baba kasha I got you. <clears throat> this first edges four and thirty-four. It says, "O ye men, are not women strong? Great is the earth, high is the heaven. Swift is swift is the sun in his course, for he compasseth the heavens round about and fetcheth his course again to his own place in one day." And so, what did they say? These these heliocentrists. They say that the sun is the center of the universe and everything revolves around it. But as we just read in sec in first Ezra's chapter four, verse 34, that great is the earth, high is the heaven. Swift in the sun is in, in his course. And when something makes a course, what does it do? It's going in a course or a circuit. So the sun and the moon rotate around the earth while the earth is, is in the center. For he compasseth the heavens round about and fetcheth his course again to his own place in one day. So, hey, the sun 
does its circuit in a day and the moon does its circuit and they, they stay in their, their constant motion of things revolving around the earth and not the other way around. God, the round earth, not the kind flat earth. The round earth, not <laughs> the flat earth. God. It says, the first day of winter in the northern hemisphere occurs between the 20th and 22nd of December. The Romans celebrated Saturnalia between 17th and 24th of December, which this was back during the uh, the Julian calendar. They've added and taken away days to make the Gregorian calendar. So this is all, all madness. It says, the early Christians... To avoid persecution during the Roman pagan festival, early Christians decked their homes with Saturnalia holly. As Christian numbers increased and their customs prevailed, the celebrations took on a Christian observance, which you got to understand history. Like our our forefathers that believe in Yahawashai, they they were persecuted during this time. It wasn't there wasn't any such thing as Christianity. There wasn't uh, it wasn't a popular type thing to say you believe in Yahawashai. So our people had to basically camouflaged their beliefs until the numbers grew so much that the Roman Empire couldn't ignore it anymore. It says, and if but I the early church... Too, oh, if I could say too, when, when we read back in Luke chapter 2, it said that the, the taxes were being gathered around the time of uh, Augustus Caesar's reign. And of course, Yahawashai was born during his reign. Then the emperors you had under him, some of them included Nero and Claudius, and those were Roman emperors that, just to back you up, that were known for heavily persecuting the, the Christians during that time. Nero put a lot of them to death, and he blamed the burning down of Rome on the Christians. And I believe it was Claudius that expelled a lot of uh, Jews from Rome due to aggressive street preaching. Sound familiar? Sounds very familiar. Says, but the early church actually did not celebrate the birth of Hamashiach in December until Telesphorus, who was the second bishop of Rome from 125 to 136 AD, declared that church services should be held during this time to celebrate, quote, the nativity of our Lord and Savior. And I'm going to skip down here to. Uh, I wanted to read where it says. Uh, because a lot of people don't realize that that Christmas was actually illegal in America for for hundreds of years. This is a very new, this whole Christmas spirit that we're talking about. It's a new thing. Mo most people have known for thousands of years that the Lord wasn't born December 20, 25th. It was it was well known that it was a pagan holiday. But it says uh, today many of the pagan uses are reflected in Christmas. Yahweh was born in March, yet his birth is celebrated on December 25th, the time of solstice. Hey, point, and... just like I said, it literally says right there, so-called Jesus was what? Born in March, which yeah. our Passover is what? Uh, in March. Coming into the yeah. spring, into the new year. And if he was born in March and our Passover takes place in March, then that perfectly lines up with Luke chapter 2, where, Pete, where uh, Joseph and Mary couldn't get a room at the inn because not only were people going up to pay their taxes, but people were coming up to, to Bethlehem uh, as well to uh, celebrate the Passover. So you had Israelites from everywhere in there celebrating the Passover. So a lot of rooms were filled up. Okay, I'm going to read that again. It says, Jehovah was born in March, yet his birth is celebrated on December 25th, the time of the winter solstice. The Christmas celebrations end the 12th day of Christmas, January 6th, the same amount of days that the return of the sun was celebrated by ancient and Roman pagans. It thus is no surprise that Christian Puritans or even conservative Christians often are upset that Christmas is not as religious as it was meant to be, forgetting that Christmas was not celebrated at all until fairly recently. Okay. It's all, I want to say it's all uh, money really is a money thing because at the end of the year that's when the, this corporation really start to, to crunch in numbers right? that's why they give you all of a sudden I remember they, I remember growing up when they didn't have a Black Friday all of a sudden probably in the last 15 16 years all of a sudden they come with a Black Friday that's a crunch numbers in for these big corporations to make the money that they weren't making throughout the year that's what it's all about and they hit you niggas with it they hit you with uh, Mardi Gras they hit you well not down here, they hit you with 
um, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, and then they hit you with the New Year's. And if you live down here in the South, in New Orleans, they hit you with Mardi Gras. So you you know for the next couple of months, you your pockets are getting you just getting hit, man. Yeah, Valentine's they, they recently, Day. Oh yeah. Oh, you got it. I'm a what? Yeah, recently they started doing Cyber Mondays, like Black Friday. Not enough. We're gonna have another mini Black Friday called Cyber Monday. They just keep coming up with days for people to spend their money. That's what this whole society is about. Right. Real Black Friday was really was, goes back to slavery when it was a Black Friday sale for you Negroes being put on the auction blocks and, and selling the biggest bucks. All right. The, Best made, you know, and, and the best slaves, man. That's what you was. That's, it was an auction for you. But now they make it an auction or run on uh, appliances and trinkets and, and electric, you know, electronic, you know, gadgets and shit, man. But like I said, it helps those. It helps those uh, failing companies that's failing throughout the year. It has. It helps come back, right? And retail is nothing more than a sham, all right? Retail in America is a sham. You know, a lot of that shit they say is for sale, it'll never be for sale. They just put a for sale sign on it. You got some asshole think it's a, a sale. And, you know, I, I worked in that shit a long time ago, man. It ain't nothing to sell unless it's over 40%. That's when you start getting a, a deal. Anything lower than that, it, 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 you, man. But that's it. I... Hey, I, I got a. If I could just. So like, oh, you got it. I'm going to just make one point real quick, just to, you know, clarify in case things might have been sounding a little confusing. Joseph and Mary went up to uh, Bethlehem, you know, to, to pay the tax, pay their taxes. And it was also around the time of, uh, again, the Passover, where Israelites from all over would be going to Jerusalem to celebrate it. And Bethlehem's a short distance outside of Jerusalem. So if all these Israelites were coming from everywhere to go celebrate in Jerusalem, then the surrounding cities, not only would Jerusalem be completely packed up, but the surrounding cities would be as well. Just showing that hey, the ends from, from Jerusalem to the surrounding areas would have been filled up. Hence why they had to go in the, the main in the in the little animal house at the end that they went to, just in case, just clearing up things real quick. But you got it, Bayan. Uh yeah, real quick. Um I don't know if you finish with this or not, I'm a why, but uh, if you're not after that, I got some, uh, I got an article following up what you said that uh, uh, Christmas being a fairly new holiday. Okay. I'm going to just read this real quick. It says the meaning of the word Christmas, the word Christmas means mass of so-called Christ, later shorted to Christmas, which mass really means death. It says, today we know that Hamashiach was not born on the 25th of December. The date was chosen to coincide with the pagan Roman celebrations honoring Saturnus, the harvest god, and Mithras, the ancient god of light, a form of sun worship. These celebrations came on or just after the winter solstice, the shortest day of the year in the northern hemisphere, to announce that winter is not forever, that life continues, and an invitation to stay in good spirit. So it's winter solstice. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. It's a pagan Roman festival. That's all December 25th is about, which we went into yesterday. You got it up. And I mean, it makes sense for a, 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 a pagan, a modern day pagan Roman God as well. The so-called Jesus Christ, who, who goes back to who? And of course, a lot of the, the really deep esoteric origins go back to Serapis Christus. But this modern day image that you see in the churches and all that goes back to Caesar Borgia. Uh, an Edomite whose father was Rodrigo Borgia, the, the Pope of Rome at the time. Hope of Rome. Gone. Okay, y'all, if you can hear us, you gotta leave and come back. Rose. Gotcha. You mind if I get this article real quick to back you up? Exactly what you just said, I'm a lot. Gone, you got it. Uh, this is an article off the uh, off of history.com. It has the, the signal of, of the history channel, uh, or the sign of the history channel, but it says, by holding Christmas at the same time as traditional winter solstice, festivals church leaders increased the chances that christmas would be popularly embraced but gave up the ability to dictate how it was celebrated by the middle ages christianity had for the most part replaced pagan religion on christmas 
believers attended church then celebrated raucously in a drunken carnival-like atmosphere similar to today's Mardi Gras. And then uh, to come down to the other point that I'm backing you up with uh, Christmas being fairly new, it says, uh, in the early 17th century, a wave of religious reform reform changed the way Christmas was celebrated in Europe when Oliver Cromwell and his Puritan forces took over England in 1645. They vowed to rid England of decadence and as a part of their effort, canceled Christmas by popular demand. Charles II was restored to the throne and with him came the return of the popular holiday. And uh, the Pilgrims' English separatists that came to America in 1620 were even more orthodox in their Puritan beliefs than Cromwell. As a result, Christmas was not a holiday in early America from 1659 to 1681. The celebration of Christmas was actually outlawed in Boston. Anyone exhibiting Exhibiting. The word? Exhibiting, so like Exhibiting the Christmas spirit was fined five shillings. By contrast, in a Jamestown settlement, Captain John Smith reported that Christmas was enjoyed by all and passed without incident. And it's the last part. After the American Revolution, English customs fell out of favor, including Christmas. In fact, Christmas wasn't declared a federal holiday until June 26, 1870. Ah, so there you have it. it until until recently, it was it, in in America. It was in in other places. It was it was made a, a federal holiday. And as the elder brother said earlier, a lot of it wasn't for for good cheer and and goodwill to all men. It's really just making money, like a lot of these different ho- hella days out here. Real okay. quick, you, know, you can answer this question here. It's, yeah, I got info for him. Yeah, right. Here. Answer that brother's question. Yeah, Nimrod, he was born on December 25th. Hey, which further plays into the fact that Yahawashai wasn't born on December 25th. And that goes into Nimrod being worshipped as a as a, a god, a, a sun idol, which as the brother Amawad went into, what is the what is a Saturnalia and, and that worship and that that uh that festival go into the, the solstices, the winter solstices, which deal with deals with the suns. And I've got some info right here for you. You might want real quick. Uh, even okay. down here, some of those uh those spirit so called spiritual or you know that have on uh, little restaurants and things, they've actually that they are closing for the winter solstice. So, yeah, that just to add, add to that point. Kind, kind. Mm-hmm. But uh, just to here's some info on BibleTools.org, what the Bible says about Nimrod. Two key figures in the origin of Christmas are Nimrod, a great grandson of Noah, and his mother and wife, Semiramis, also known as Ishtar and Isis. Nimrod. Hey, and what proves that too, because what you gotta ask, what you coming into this knowledge, you know, this is all of us did. Why is it that the Christians of the, of the Roman Catholic Church today still worship Mary and baby Jesus? All right. Even around the time of Christmas, you'll still see these people out here having a, a, a reenactment of the, the manger and Jesus, and they worship him as a baby. They're not worshiping Yahweh Shot. Yahweh Shot died at the age of 33, man. Right? They're worshiping Tammuz. All right? The Christmas tree is all the worship of Nimrod. They all coincide. They, they don't know. These people out here don't know what they're, they're into, man. No, go ahead. Uh. Hey, it, it worship is what, on the one hand, Tammuz and and Semiramis, that the 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 Madonna and the the Virgin Mother and the Child symbol, and it can also go into what Isis and the, uh, I believe, uh, was it Osiris or who was it? Any brothers that may know Osiris, off the top of their head? Um, Osiris. Hmm. O- Osiris and Isis, uh, Ishtar, Nimrod. Ishtar uh, Tammuz and what now? Jesus Christ and 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 the Virgin Mary, which that's a whole nother topic in itself, because because Mary wasn't a virgin and wasn't a virgin that gave birth to to Yahweh Shai. Got a quick three for you. Kind of. Well, let, let me just finish this information okay. real quick, Baba mm-hmm. Kasha. 
But as I said, two key figures in the origin of Christmas are Nimrod, a great grandson of Noah, and his mother and wife, Semiramis, also known as Ishtar and Isis. Nimrod, known in Egypt as Osiris, was the founder of the First World Empire at uh, Babel, later known as Babylon, from ancient sources such as the Epic of Gilgamesh and, records unearth and records unearthed by archaeologists from long-ruined Mesopotamian and Egyptian cities, we can reconstruct subsequent events. After Nimrod's death, circa 2167 BC, now listen closely, Semiramis promoted the belief that he was a god, what, a, a sun god. She claimed that she saw a full-grown evergreen tree spring out of the roots of a dead tree stump, symbolizing the springing forth of new life for Nimrod. On the anniversary of his birth, she said Nimrod would visit the evergreen tree and leave gifts under it. His birthday fell on the winter solstice at the end of December. I want to say like on that too, because right after that, what Nimrod wife did, what did, what she, what did, what did she do throughout the province of the kingdom to all those who didn't want to come and, and bring a gift to uh to to Nimrod's uh evergreen tree. It was the force of the sword was used, man. All right, this is just this, this is every other religion, and every other uh you know uh yeah so called you know religion they use the force of the sword ultimately, man, make the people believe. All right, that's why he, it's it's a it's a uh, give me a uh, Mark seven and seven, man. Old for goody. And if I could just correct myself real quick, it was, you know, you had Semiramis, and Tammuz, and then you had Isis and Horus. Now what? Jesus Christ and Mary. That's where, like we were talking about a little bit earlier, that's where it goes back to how people say, oh, Jesus Christ is, a, is symbolic for the literal son, the S-U-N. It goes down and so-called dies in the night and then rises again. Which for those for that pagan deity, Jesus Christ, that's what it goes back to. But for the true Messiah, Yahawashai, that's not what it goes back to. Hey, uh, I'm a while get that article I got and just go to the last, the last particular, the last particular uh, paragraph in it. When it talks about uh, Constantine, Constantine was another major, major, major part in this whole December 25th thing, man. Right. I'm sure. I got Mark 7 and 7 for you, too. Yeah, get Mark 7 and 7 real fast. I'm about to put this on the screen for the brother. I got to navigate through this. It says, how bid, Mark 7 and 7, how bid in vain do they worship me, teaching for the doctrines, the commandments of men. Yeah, and that's what all this is all it's about. It's the commandments of men, traditions of men. Right? Semiramis, Talmud. Worship of these uh, different uh, sun gods, these sex, these sex gods. This is all it's about, man. And somebody get uh, a Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Jeremiah ten. We gotta, eat, you know, just that's why the Lord tell us learn not to wear the heathen, man. But the heathen have you going all the way off. All right, you'd be hella through. Well, go down, go down real fast. I'm a white on that screen. Uh, says why is Christmas in December? It says the church in Rome began formally celebrating Christmas on December 25th and 336 during the reign of the Emperor Constantine, as Constantine had made Christianity the effective religion of the empire. Some have speculated that choosing this date had the political motive of weakening the established pagan celebrations. The date was not widely accepted in Eastern Empire, where January 6th had been favored for another half century and Christmas did not become a major Christian festival until the ninth century. Boom, right there, man. And of course, Go ahead. with uh, the Emperor Constantine, who, who was an Israelite, they had the Council of Nicaea and a bunch of other councils, which what? Blended pagan worship and gods into Christianity so they could make it more appealing to the Roman citizens at that time, who while you had a growing Christian population, a lot of them were still in steep, in steep, steeped in those in those ancient pagan gods and customs. And now fast forward uh, back to 
thousands of years later, it, it's unless the spirit's dealing with you and, and you understand the scriptures, it's really hard to separate the two, as we can see with the majority of these people out here, especially our people. And we can start winding down too. I, I got you. Con, con. I got you something too. Con, con. Yeah, you. I got it. Con, you got it. Con. Uh, and you, uh, when you look up the symbol, it goes into the symbol means tenth, which would be the the tenth month of the old Roman calendar, which is the winter solstice month. But from March to December, uh, March, April, May, June, July, August, from October, November, December, which is ten months, which lets you know the beginning of the year starting what month. If December is the tenth month in March. the old interrogant. It start when? In March. So that's the what? Beginning of the year, right? That's right. I think you read in the article that yeah, I wish I was born and when? In March. 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 That's right. December is not the actual 12th month. In the old Roman ancient calendar, it's the 10th. It means 10. December means 10. Come on. But, you know, yeah, like you said, just. Octa means 8. Nova means yeah. 9. Octa <laughs> mean, exactly. Mm -hmm. You start to get get the months from that way, man. But you know these devils is just devils, man. This is uh Matthew two, start from the top. I'm gonna kind of speed read it and go through it just to make a quick point. It says now when Yahweh was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, "Where is he?" That is born king of the Jews. Now, if these men knew exactly what day Yahweh was born on, well, I ain't going to spoil it. They knew exactly what day he was born on. They wouldn't be looking for him first and foremost, okay? You don't look for a person that's born on a particular day. If you know when he's going to be born, that's the day he's going to be born. You wouldn't be looking for somebody, all right? Like the doctors give our mothers today, what, a birth, a day of birth, like, all right, at this time, he going to be born around this day at this time. It says, saying, for we have seen his star in the east and come to worship him. Really spiritually, that star is a chariot. But it says, when Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with them. And he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together. He demanded of them where... Yahweh should be born. And they say it unto him. And Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. And thou Bethlehem in the land of Judea are not least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall a governor and shall come a governor and shall rule my people Israel, which a star is born out of him. But it says, He's a star that's gonna be born out of Israel. It says, the Herod, when he privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. Because it was on the wise, I heard that when you see these stars appear, this, that's when the son of man should be born. All right. And Herod was trying to ultimately find him to kill him, man. All right. That was another reason why Mary and Joseph was on a run, which I was shot. Okay. It says, and he sent them. To Bethlehem and say, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. But he didn't want to worship him, all right? He wanted to put him to death because further down when you read, it tells you that how he went and put all the firstborn sons to death because he couldn't locate Yahweh Shai. Okay? It's uh, when they heard, heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was, which lets you know that was a chariot, man. All right. A star came from the east and stood over where the young child was born. But I said all this to say this. In order to see those stars in the time of the year, you got winter where the, the sky is what? Gloomy. It's real dark. All right. When you can see something as vividly as the stars when we look up, the, clock, the, the sky is usually what? Clear. 
All right. When you got winter time or December time, as you got now, you have a dark, cloudy type of, you know, hard, a visible. The, it's not as easily visible as seen in the springtime versus the winter time, man. All right. Which is another indication to let you know what season it was in. If you saw a star go from one place to the other, it's probably because the skies was clear. All right. Which represents hey, I, a particular season. Go ahead, out. And when the wise men travel in the dead of winter, when, when they could risk them dying, their caravan dying, all that. Don't make sense, man. Just like, just like them shepherds watching over their flocks at night. Hey, traveling in that day wasn't how it is now. I, you had to pack weeks and months worth of food and clothes. You know, so travel was way more harsh back then. And just uh -huh. to back up that point uh, that you just made, Raya, you know, those those men wasn't going to risk their lives, you know, hey, in the heart of winter. But you got they it. Didn't right? have, I they didn't have portable heaters. Now right. I'm going to get to the point so y'all brothers could go. I'm going to jump down to 12. It says, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to hell ride, there was the wise men that hell ride sent off. They departed into their own country and the way. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream saying, arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word for hell ride will seek the young child and destroy him, man. All right. So that was, you know, ultimately why he was looking for him. But in order to, to know when he was born, he had to watch the star that was actually going to pass over or would not to actually be an indication on where to find a child. All right. Which that star is a chariot, man. But go ahead. Uh, you got it, right? Oh, you brothers, whoever next. Salaki. I know Samaki. I know Samaki had a precept and, I, and we'll... I know you had called for that Jeremiah 10, so we'll get your precepts of Machia and we'll close up. What'd you say? Scratch it. Scratch it? Yeah. Kind. You mind if we still bring it out though? Because there's there's one point, one little point I wanted to make going into, you know, Nimrod. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just have to go then. I'm gonna have to go. Oh. I don't know if one of y'all brother can turn it off or not, but I'm gonna have to go. Oh well. Yeah, then we'll then we'll just get a Samakia's precept and shut it oh, down. Oh, we can shut it down. The other need to shut it down, so we will shut it down. That no oh, big. Kind of, kind of. All right. So with that, we hope you sincere Akim and Akwath were edified by this live Shabbat lesson. And again, as always, we're going to give all praises, glory, and infinite honors to Yahweh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who ruled and teach well. And peace and salutations to you, sincere Akim and Akwath out there. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.